I'm turning into Humbaka Nordedain, right? It was really huge and it got to the point that I had to actually get surgery to remove it. Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'm Judy and welcome to my little hub. Um, today I'm addressing a very important issue which is constipation and problems with your thyroid. I was recently watching this video by Tisha K. She's a YouTuber um, and she was talking about a personal issue in her life which is uh, basically uh, the growth of her, her thyroid. And um, well, let's have a look and then we'll come back and talk more about it. Everyone is concerned about my neck, okay? So it's something I've been dealing with for the last three years, actually, uh, since I was 28, but it has grown, okay? It is called a thyroid nodule, Gordier. Hot nodule, meaning that it gets big, it gets small. That's why sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't see it, okay? Y'all don't understand how many people that I know that simply cannot take a shit, okay? And I'm saying that blatantly. I know it sounds a little funny, but it's not funny because uh, constipation leads to things like this, okay? And I know you guys ask me, Dasha, are you constipated? Where are you constipated? I'm not constipated. Now, nah, I used to bathroom three times a day. But um, from age 10 to about, I want to say, 31, 32, you no, know, I probably took a shit once a week or once a month sometimes due to my diet, okay? What was my diet like? It was more so heavy in seafood, fried fish, fried shrimp, crabs, you know what I'm saying, all that other stuff. I ate oysters every day, raw oysters, okay? I used to walk my ass from my house up to the local seafood market, get me a little styrofoam cooler, and I would drag that bitch back on the side of the road, okay, and I would shuck my own oysters every day, and this went on for about, I want to say, 15 years straight, okay, until I discovered my neck in pain. This right here is a collection of estrogen. When my estrogen is high, it gets big. When it gets small, uh, when the estrogen is low, it gets small. And how do I relieve myself of estrogen? Taking a shit. That is such an important topic. It is so important that she's actually talking about not just the, the um, problems with your thyroid, but the problems with eating unhealthy, uh, and most importantly, the problem with um, not using the, the bathroom, not getting rid of your waste regularly as people are supposed to be. Now, I know most people have heard that you're really supposed to be using the bathroom three times a day. But I know for myself, when I when I heard this in, in my early teens, my early teens all the way up to 30, I really didn't take it um, as a serious issue because I know for myself, and I guess similar to Tisha, in that I, from maybe 16-ish, 13-ish, I was constipated all the time. And I thought it was a regular thing. I thought it was uh, just a given. That's just the way that it is. That if I use the bathroom um, twice a week, then I was good. You know, it was like, oh, yes, I got that done for the week. Right. Um, and I think that this is such a big issue that people aren't uh, paying attention to it. Because what happens is that this leads to other health problems in your life. And I see that in my life also because when I was young, when I was in school on campus, I was on, you know, those fad diets that we all as women tend to get onto because you're never really happy with yourself because, well, the media tells you you need to look a certain way, right? Besides that, what the point I'm getting at is that I was never overweight back then. But um, I felt like I had to look a certain way. And now when I look back at it, I wish <laughs> I was that way. I wish I could look the way I looked back then. But um, to, to the story, what happens is that I um, went on to the doctor... Atkinson, yes, Dr. Atkinson diet. And as I said, I was living on campus. I was in uh, my early 20s. And so, um, you know, I felt I needed to look a certain way, as I said. So 
I went on to the diet and I must say I was very successful on the diet in that I lost a lot of weight. I would wake up early in the morning, I would go to the gym that was on campus, so I would just walk across to the gym and then I would come back and I would make my meat <laughs> because Dr. Atkinson is basically eating a lot of protein and a lot of fat. Maybe not so much fat, but a lot of protein. That's basically the diet. And so my diet consists of eating meat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, you know, like Tisha was saying about the seafood, I was consuming a lot of fat. And what, although I was working out, I was still constipated because I was going every couple of days and I was, it was a, a large amount of waste, um, but it was not regular. And so I developed a health problem during that time too, because actually I had a, um, a lump on my back and it was so big. Like I keep like saying to myself, oh my gosh, you know, um, I'm turning into humpback and Nordidane, right? Um, it was really huge and it got to the point that I had to actually get surgery to remove it. And this is what happens when we're consuming all these unhealthy things and enjoying it or even seeing the result in my case of the diet. I, I, I looked so good. I had lost so much weight, but all of that fat and all of that protein was inside of my body and not getting out. You know, the getting rid of the waste three times a day is so, so important. I don't think we understand how important it is. When you stop and you think about the fact that you have poop inside of you, the stuff that's decaying, that causes diseases. And then you begin to see on your body how, how it manifests itself in terms of whether it's a growth on your back, in my case, or your, your thyroid getting big. So um, I have been working for years now to get myself to that place where I am going on a regular basis. And I think there is what I think they say one in 12 women suffer from this, suffer from thyroid issue. And it's it's does it's not necessarily just the fact that you're eating unhealthy it's also the fact that you may not be sleeping properly you may be experiencing a lot of stress and just dealing with it and going on and not realizing that all of that stuff inside of you whether it's food or emotions that it's affecting your body later on found out that I'm also allergic to gluten so uh, I, I can't have gluten stuff, but I used to love to eat my baked food and, um, you know, your bread and all of that, which is just white flour, right? To, uh, most, most of the time, it's all white flour. Even when you're buying something that sells whole wheat, that's not it, right? You need grains, you need fiber in your diet. And so over the years, I've tried many things, uh, stool softener. You know, um, always buying stool softener because I would have that issue. And I used to buy a lot of Metamucil. I used to buy a ton of this stuff. But the thing is that this thing is loaded with sugar. Loaded. You, so um, you're trying to get to your fiber, but at the same time, you're killing yourself with sugar. No, I'm not saying don't take it. I'm just saying it didn't work for me because sugar is not good for my system. So um, what I do now is that I always, um, if I find that I'm backing up, that it's, you know, I'm not going every single day that I, like if one day comes that I'm not going, then that's an issue because again, you're supposed to be going three times a week, right? So. I take my Castara Cigara, and I've actually done a video on this before, but it looks, um, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like that. And I take that as a tea, and I don't take it consistently um, back to back, but if I find that I have an issue, I take it, and it's really good for cleaning your, 
cleaning you out, starting the process of, of getting your body back into um, being be more regular. Uh, I know a lot of people take Senna um, if they're constipated. I don't use that because for me, it is um, way too strong. And of course, what I take on a regular basis, besides eating healthy, which basically is getting the, the, the fiber, the natural fiber from the food, like you have to be eating natural food, which is whole grain food, honestly. Uh, if you're not, then you're, you're going to get you're not getting the fiber that your body actually needs. So besides that, uh, what I do take is I take a lot of sea moss. And so whether you're talking about this um, type of sea moss, which is the um, golden, golden type, which is um, Wildcraft, um, or the purple sea moss, which, is, which has a little bit of a, more health benefit the the you know when things are a little bit more purple or darker it holds a little bit more of the nutrients in it so the purple sea moss which looks something like this i take that now um sea moss is good and most people know sea moss is great for your immune system but it's also great for um maintaining your weight because it suppresses your appetite so you don't end up eating too much. Um, besides that, CMOS is great for your thyroid because the issue um, with your thyroid, especially in regards to endometriosis, is that um, your body has too much estrogen. And so, excuse me, and so the CMOS is great because the CMOS is anti um, estrogen. So it helps to actually regulate your system. So CMOS is actually great for thyroid issues. Guys, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling anyone exactly what they should take, but I'm just saying for me, this is what works. I take my CMOS and I take my herbs and that works great for me because I would rather use something that is natural rather than... Um, some synthetic um, item that you're gonna get over the counter. So yeah, that's what I do. And the bottom line is that when you have these issues, when you have these issues, it shouldn't really surprise anyone that your body is beginning to um, to fight back. The things that are coming out of your body or coming up on your body is whether your face is is bumping up all over or your hair is falling out, your skin is extremely dry. All of these are indication that something that you're putting inside your body is not right for you. And eventually that's going to lead to something worse where you have some type of cancer or something like that. Um, we have to make sure that we take care of our health because the bottom line is this is the only life that you have. Once you've destroyed it, there's nothing else. You can't go back and say, well, you know what? Um, I had a fantastic time just eating all the garbage that I wanted to. And now that I'm, you know, sit up here in the hospital bed, um, that's the memory I want to have. You have to be able to be functional and enjoy your life um, as opposed to your taste bud. And I say that because I find I constantly have to, you know, fight and work with that issue too because a taste bud, I'm telling you, and as somebody who, you know, was born in the Caribbean, there's so many delicious um, dishes and things like that and the way that they're cooked and things like that, that is absolutely just divine when it comes to taste. But at the end of the day, you know, do you want to trade your health for that? And I certainly don't want to do that. So, you know, um, I try to seek out a healthier way by taking care of myself and using the natural herbs to help aid me and help keep things regular and healthy. Okay, guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you're not a subscriber, why not? Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. 